Q Music. We're all about class when it comes to pens, and we like to let it show. Welcome to Fountain Pen Radio, presented by FBGeeks.com. And now for your fountain pen enthusiast host, here's Eric and Dan. Gentlemen. This is Fountain Pen Geeks podcast, episode number 24, for Tuesday, May 15th, 2012. We are recording live on Sunday, May 13th. Happy Mother's Day and welcome to Fountain Pen Radio. This is Eric. And this is Dan. Dan, how are you today? Happy Mother's Day to you, sir. um, Thank you. (laughs) Well, it is Mother's Day. (laughs) Well, it is, but I am not a mother, obviously. No, but I'll wish you a happy Mother's Day anyway. (laughs) Well, thank you. Happy Mother's Day to you and all the mothers out there. Um, And you were saying that you're fine? Is that what you were about to say before I cut you off? Uh, yes, I'm doing very good. It's it's good to be back. Um, I'm so sad that we missed last week, but uh, I, I'm ready for the show today. I am ready as well. I think Mr. Gray, who's sitting next to you, is also ready, and he has a guest. I had a distraction. He has a guest with him. Hey, there's... I'm sorry, <laughs> you guys here. Andrew, he doesn't have a microphone, so we'll have to. I'll have to just tell you what's going on. He has a loose <laughs> tooth, and it's barely hanging on by a teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny thread. This oh, is his first get, get loose the tooth. Just, just pull him out. Oh, it's the first oh my loose God. tooth. That's why he was That's so That's his anxious. first loose tooth ever. Hey, can you make me a deal? Can you wait on me to actually pull that? Because I think that's coming out tonight. No? All right, all right. No, when it comes out, Dad, it's coming out. <laughs> all right. Sorry about you that, know, guys. Just, He's been... You just right. tie a, 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 a circular knot or whatever they call it, a, a sailor's knot, uh, in... in a piece of dental floss and tie it on the tooth and the other hand goes to a doorknob and you slam the door. Ah, oh, old school. I like it. Do you guys want me to try and pull his tooth live, live on Fountain Pen <laughs> Geeks right now? Depends. How many, how many, how many uh, listeners are there? How many viewers do he we just have? Ran, he just ran away screaming, so maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> it, it might make for some great video, but I have no idea. I told uh, him, I told, you, you heard me. I said, promise me you'll wait on me, but I don't know. He, he's impatient for the tooth If that's his first tooth, shouldn't, shouldn't it be like videotaped or, or recorded? Uh, my, my wife is over here. She does have a oh, camera, okay. so no big deal. Let's, let's right. get on with all the show. This the is show. about pens. I'm we're sorry. We're all back. We're recovered from our, our adventures, and the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, upcoming pen shows because <laughs> they keep going. What's the next one? So the, the end of the month, uh, May 3rd. 3- 31st through June 3rd is the ninth annual Triangle Pen Show in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, they're going to have a packed schedule with uh, auction, seminars, and workshops. If you're anywhere in the area, definitely head to that show and uh, give us a report because, uh, I don't know, Brian, have you ever been to that show? I have not, and I've been I've been meaning to do it for a while. Uh, Terry Mallhorter runs the show, and Terry always runs great shows. He always does. He he also does the Ohio show, but it's one of those deals where it kind of falls in an awkward time for us. And it's also Raleigh is a really really long drive for us, so it's one of those deals where we have to decide: do we bite the bullet and just drive, or do we go to the expense of flying? And in the end, when you add up all the gas for driving, who knows? Which yeah. is actually you know a better way. So no, I have not been there, but that is one that has been on my hit list for a while. Yeah, so none of us have been to that show. I would really like to go to that one. But then if I'm going to travel that far, I don't know which one I'd pick. Um because there's also, you know, the DC show later this year. Um you just need to and, move somewhere to the East Coast, right in the middle of all these shows. But then I'd be you know, that much farther from LA <laughs> and hey, you're going to take a plane to LA anyway, so Yeah, true. Yeah, hey, you and haven't then, uh, been to the you haven't been to the DC show yet. If you think about it, the perfect place to live would be some place some place on the East Coast because you could catch DC, Philly, Baltimore, Raleigh's not that far. You could still go to Ohio within about seven or eight hours. So, um, and then I guess Chicago would be inconvenient. But uh, as far as pen shows go, East Coast is the place to be. Yeah, I think I see a, a move in our future. <laughs> You're supposed to be going to Flagstaff, so, but you know, you'll, you'll never find a pen show in Flagstaff, at least not yet. Um, anyway, um, June June 24th is the only other show this month, and that's the Midland Pen Show, and that's actually in Litchfield, UK. Um, I definitely won't be making that one. Eric, will you You'll be going to that one? No, I don't think so, but did you say June no. 24th? Yes. All right. So that's well over a month away. I still have time to make plans for that. But it's one of those one-day shows, right? <laughs> but, you know, if Sarge is there. Sarge is a one-man pen show. And oh, If you he don't is. know who we're talking about, Sarge. Sarge, uh, I don't know. Minhas. He comes to L.A. and he was in Chicago. And that's the only two places I've mm-hmm. ever seen him, except we saw him on that video from uh, a show in the U.K. He just, he's a one-man pen show. He is. He brings probably, what, 
three, four, maybe five hundred pens at least. I was going to say a thousand. I mean, he's he's got easily three tables full of pens. It's it's unreal. It's really amazing too because he makes well. First of all, first of all, let's let's say this first. He is the most amazing gentleman. One of the most oh, amazing gentlemen I've so ever nice. met. He is such a cool guy. Um, but, you know, he lives in the U.K., of course. Well, you guys just mentioned that. Imagine, I mean, what, what, I mean, you think we are pen fanatics? Can you imagine <laughs> flying to just about every pen show that he can yeah. possibly get to? So he does L.A., he does Chicago, he always does D.C. I saw him in Columbus last year. Um, and you know, if, there's a, it, if, I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, he has a day job. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he does. He does all that pen stuff, and but he still has a, a quote-unquote real job as well. So I, I'm glad. I didn't happen. I didn't buy anything from him at, in Chicago. I did in L.A., and Dan yeah. almost did in Chicago. Almost. I almost. I was, I was this close. I did my best. I mean, you have to admit I did my best to get you to buy that pen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you were really pushing me. I mean, you were doing everything in your power. I mean, other... You know everything except handing him the money from my wallet. I mean, right. Well, since we're we're already talking about the Chicago Pen Show, uh, we were all there, and it was like just last week. Oh yeah. man, I can't believe it. It's all over. Can't believe it. Two weeks ago, we were all sitting here having this podcast, this Fountain Pen Radio, and it was it was in the future, and now it's in the past, unfortunately. <laughs> but I have I have pens to show for it. In fact, I posted a little uh, uh, something at Fountain Pen Geeks that shows all the pens that I purchased. Yeah, this was an amazing post. I actually didn't think that, like, all these pins, it, it, it didn't come back to me. I thought you purchased only, like, one or two, but for some reason, well, it's not that I don't know why I thought it? that. Five? <laughs> I think it's five total. If you count the dip pen, does the dip pen count? Yeah, I count that, yeah. Uh, I, I was happy with the dip pen because I was looking for one. Uh, what I wasn't prepared for was that you really like the dip, the dip pen, don't you, Dan? It's awesome. Yeah, so I wasn't it's really expecting awesome. that because you know, you're a fountain pen man, and you're you're aside from just being a fountain pen man, you're a I want a piston man, and here I come with a dip pen, and you think it's awesome. Well, and I don't think it would just be any dip pen, but this, I mean, your particular dip pen, it's just cool. It's I mean, retractable nib. That's that's the, what... the nib on it is is massive. I mean, you know, compared to the rest of the pen, and the the flex is just out of this world. I mean, it was the retractable. By the way, nib is... that got me. Yes. Is that is that pen the nib that I see at the very first uh, opening clip of that video you guys no, made? No, that's a, that was an amazing dip pen in that video. Dan, you saw that one, right? The seventeen hundred dollar dip pen. Oh yes, seventeen yes. hundred. Oh my gosh, yeah. I didn't know that. And so no, that's not the one that I purchased, <laughs> but I did play with it a little <laughs> wow. bit, and that was an amazing, amazing dip pen. Oh. Is that the one? Okay, all right, I got it. The one on the left had an asking price of seventeen hundred. So I go, to, I go to your blog post for the Friday show update, and that's the one that I saw in the video. Uh, oh, yes, yeah. it is actually. There's a picture of it. Awesome. There's a, a picture cool. of the one that I purchased uh, at the blog, and I think the title of the post is called "My Chicago Pen Show Takeaways." And there's a there's, a, there's cool. a close up of the nib. As a matter of fact, it's a Fairchild. the The one that seventeen hundred wasn't a Fairchild, and I forget the name of it. Uh, but it was also from New York, as is as were Fairchilds. Uh, but no, if it. If... By the way, al allow me to say I brought up that video that you guys made. Excellent job! That is wonderful. Someone out there has some pretty amazing video production and editing skills, from what I can tell. No, I, I had nothing to do with it. Did you have anything to do with it, Dan? <laughs> no, not at all. No, that was uh, my friend from Mexico, Juan Carlos, came and joined us at the show, and he ran around with. Uh, his camera and took little snippets and then put them all together and that's what that's what put that video together I, the, the that was, dude is that amazing. was awesome yeah. I mean, he's got skill neither dan or i saw any of it until he had it finished and said do you want to use this duh yeah i think we want to use yeah. it yeah <laughs> <laughs> so eric what else did you get beside this dip pen uh the first thing i found was a dip pen and that was on my list the second thing i found was not on my list it was my first off list purchase uh, I got near, I got too close to the Anderson Pens table. And if you recall, uh, Brian had recently posted some new old stock uh, Esterbrook LJ pens that he found, I think he found them in Arkansas, uh, that are marked Echo in Mexico, made in Mexico. Uh, and so I, I really wanted one, but since they were just online, I was able to resist that. But once I saw one in person, I had to have one. So even though that wasn't on my list, I got an Esterbrook made in Mexico. And uh, after that, I went to the pen auction. Now, Brian, you weren't at the pen auction. You did the smart thing. You went out to dinner. 
<laughs> I well, showed he, up. For he a, was there for a few minutes to take two pictures, yep. but he 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 wasn't. He didn't have a, a bidding number, so he was in no danger at all. And correction, I took at least twelve pictures. Oh, okay. <laughs> a dozen pictures. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but I I I did come and that go. That was all the noise uh, I heard. We, yeah, I'm sorry. We we were yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We we were pretty exhausted by that time, and we had a good dinner on our minds, so we we didn't stick around for the auction. And Dan did not have a bidder's number for the auction. No, and I, I did not. And I kept looking over my shoulder at you. You were standing on the sidelines. Do you want me to bid on this one? Do you want me to bid on this? And you didn't want me to bid on anything. Uh. And I wasn't planning to bid on anything. In fact, I didn't plan on having a bidding number. But we had gone out to dinner just before the auction with the Andersons, Lisa and Brian, and Although I didn't know it, they had arranged for someone else to get their bidding numbers, and they got one for me as well. So I, I just conveniently had a bidding number. And when that a pen came up, it was a maybe Todd Swan, gold-filled, beautiful pen. I had no interest in it, but the bidding stopped at $75, and I said, no, this can't go for $75. So I bid 100 <laughs> on it, thinking, now, you know, it'll get the ball rolling. No, <laughs> it didn't go any further than $100, so I took that pen home as well. And that was just Friday. <laughs> that was an excellent buy. It was, it and was. You, you know, the, the way you describe that, you know, you bid and then expect it to take off, that actually happened a lot that night. Every, yeah. I mean, it would pins would slow down, and you're like, there's no way it's going to end for this. And then they would just take right off and, and you know, double or triple in price. Well, yeah, but, and that's what I thought this pin would people, do. People were, like, waiting for him to say going once, going twice, and then someone would bid. But that didn't yeah. happen with my pen, my pen because that, my pen was meant for me, and it's a beautiful swan. And and I inked oh, it up. Gorgeous. I even had Andrea, uh, Andrea Gray, your wife, Brian, in case you didn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, she wrote with the pen, and she agreed that it was a semi-flex nib. It's got some nice flex to it. And it's just a wonderful accident. So I'm very happy with you that. You stole that pen. Yes, I did. Yeah. For that, for that yeah. price, I stole it. But I think that's I worth more. I think if you if you put that up on eBay, you'd sell it for a lot more. I'll bet. Yeah, easily. I'll, I'll get to that. But someday. I think you should for hang now on. I'm going to hang on to it. Yeah, it's it's Chicago memorabilia. You can't get rid and of it. There's, for a there's while. that wonderful story that goes along with it. That what took me ten minutes to tell. So I'm going to move on to Saturday now. <laughs> Saturday. I, I was enjoying it. What are you talking Saturday, about? Saturday. <laughs> I wasn't planning to really look for anything on Saturday because I did so much damage on Friday. But then, you know, that's what friends are for. And Dan comes up to me just outside the show doors and says, I found something you're going to want to see. And he said it just like that. And I looked at him and he says, <laughs> like, really, you're going to want to see this. Like, probably buy it. And then he found something on my list, which was uh, the Namiki... Uh, vanishing Point Capless from the 90s that says Namiki on the clip in the color blue, which was the last one I needed for my complete collection of those particular pens. So we walked over there and I snatched it right up. Um, and Yeah, it took you all of what, like three minutes? Yeah, I looked at the nib, got the date wrong, you corrected me on that, and then boom, <laughs> I bought it. And I think that's all the damage I did on on Saturday. Now, throughout the show, I was asking people if they had a Pilot MYU. And some people didn't even know what that was. And other people, nobody had one. But anybody who knew what it was, I was asking, okay, if anyone in the room has one, who might? And they would send me to different tables. So I would go from table to table to table, asking and asking and asking. Nobody had one. By nearly the end of the show on Sunday, I hadn't yet asked Brian Anderson. And for some reason, I was standing at his table. I think I was buying ink. And I just mentioned it to him that I hadn't been able to find a pilot at NYU. And without skipping a beat, he says, well, go talk to Frank. And I apologize. I don't even know who this Frank is. I was so excited because I figured Brian knows what he's talking about. Sends me over to Frank, and there's my pen, my pilot at NYU, a picture of which you can see at the Fountain Pen Geeks website. That was my, uh, that was my favorite of the, of the show. I like them all. I love them all. But the, the pilot at NYU was really the one I got most excited about. Silence. You guys got to help was, me out here. I, Come on. No. I, oh, sorry. I, I was typing I, in chat. Um, I love those Pilot NYUs, and I had one that I traded a friend with, and it was one that had a blue jewel in the cap, and it was limited edition. Right, so you got the Although, M90, which was the, the yes, reproduction of the original. Exactly. But if I'm not mistaken, like it was a limited edition of like 2,000. So you hate to think a limited edition when you've got numbers that high. But, you know, honestly... I, I usually don't post pens. This one requires yes. it. And the integral nib, I think, is so amazingly cool on these That's pens. That's what I love about it. Um, and the, the, it's yeah. compact size when it's actually closed. Because yep. it kind of has the nib of a, a Parker T1. But the, the cap bit. is not nearly as long. It's, it's a completely different design, but the nib is somewhat similar in that it's sort of a piece of the barrel that has been shaped into a nib. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I just happen to like the design of the MYU more than, 
Yes, I'll say it out loud more than the Parker T1. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't find the Parker T1 design all that attractive, really. So I, I agree 100% with you. I think that this pen is one of the slickest, and I still regret selling the one that I did. And, and, and my particular pen, uh, where you had the blue jewel at the top of the crown, the top of the, of mm -hmm. the cap, I have a little black disc with a little indentation. I've already contacted Ernest Shin about that. He's going to put a little beautiful envy inducing piece of mother of pearl in that for me very nice <laughs> i cannot wait to know, see that's that really good and i'm gonna let him pick the one you know because he's the artist i just write with pens that's cool so that was that was basically my take aside from uh uh some ink i bought a lot of ink and i oh well my friend from mexico who we've mentioned already juan carlos was not a fountain pen person before he got to the show oh, not at all he left with quite a few fountain pens <laughs> <laughs> uh, he he purchased his it, first fountain pen was a um, vanishing point the stealth the stealth VP and it, he started with a great pen yes. it's a slippery slope <laughs> he's, he's he's living testament well, now. he went from that to the second pen was an Edison <laughs> all right I heard about that one I heard about that one and he got a, a Twisby uh, uh, 540 for his father Oh, he man, got right. uh, a Waterman. It was a, it's a Waterman, but it's got Harley Davidson on it. It's a Harley Davidson pen made by Waterman for his brother, and he got um, an Acme pencil for his mother, a Sudoku, Sudoku, however you say that. Yeah, pencil. Yeah. Sudoku, I think. Yeah, I, I haven't graduated. Whatever that little number. I haven't game graduated is. to that <laughs> game yet. So we have another fountain pen geek. Uh, in our midst. And if I can say so, after after getting to know Juan Carlos, that that guy is a super cool dude. I really enjoyed his time with us, and uh, uh, I actually brushed up on my Spanish while I was there. I learned the difference between perro and perro. <laughs> if anybody likes to fill in on that, feel free. If not, it might be an inside joke for someone that's that's fluent well, in Spanish. Well, now you're saying it like something else. We'll have to we'll have to brush you up again, and then we'll we'll, we'll have All you right. back on the show when you speak Spanish. And, and remind me of that when we get to the uh, Camp Edison, because there's a funny story about Spanish and your son, as a matter of fact. But since we're still at the Chicago Pen Show, one thing I will mention before mm -hmm. I turn this over to Dan so he can tell his stories. We saw amazingly little, almost nothing, of Brian Gray at the Pen Show. Yeah. Why was that? <laughs> well, we knew we were going to go to Camp Edison. And I guess we were busy and you were busy. You weren't really always at your table. <laughs> You were, you were well, roaming around, too. Well, honestly, my, my wife sells the pens just as well as I do, and it's sometimes the best thing that I can do is get out and rub shoulders with other pen retailers. And, you know, maybe, you know, I, while I was there, I got another retail account. So, you know, that's, it's sometimes important to get away from the table, and that's why it's nice that my wife can sell them just as well, if not probably better than what I do. And uh, sometimes I need to get out there and hobnob. And also, you were pictures. I did take a lot yeah, of pictures. Yeah, you were yeah. Pictures. There's a slideshow on my website with all my photos. And you'll notice we mentioned Sarge Minhas. Probably 40% of my photos are just his table. So that's <laughs> yeah. a testament to what that guy's one collection is show. like. And I, I, I will say one more thing. On my list at every pen show is I want to see an Ernest, an Ernest Hemingway. I did not and see you one. It. Dan, you found one. Some guy was walking I've... around with one. Yeah, it was in his pocket. And Brian and, found uh, one for sale and took a picture yep. of it. But And I didn't even know that you had that, that aspiration or else I would have told you where it was. What did you know I was looking for? Because I thought I asked you for a Hemingway and you sent me over to Panopoli. Um, you asked me for a pilot NYU oh, okay. and I sent you okay. to Panopoly. I don't think you ever mentioned a Hemingway to no, me. I never. Oh, but then again, at, at the same time, I was just snapping pictures of cool pens. I don't know if you would have said, hey, have you seen any Hemingways? Did I even remember that I saw it? I was just snapping pictures. So I might not have been any someday, help. So, someday but, I will see a Hemingway in real well, life. I do know the vendor. Now, you don't necessarily want to buy one sight unseen. You just want to hold one and check it well, out and then decide. The thing with the Hemingway is that it's, it is, for many people, a grail pen. And I've seen yeah. pictures of it, and I rather like it. The design, mm -hmm. I like the color. Uh, but it cannot be a true grail pen, I think, until I've seen it in real life. Because yeah. maybe it's a disappointment, and I can take it off my grail pen list. which It isn't even there well, yet. Although, unfortunately, I feel bad because I always forget the guy's name. Yeah, so do I. Um, he will be at the DC show. He's that Russian gentleman. Um, he also has a. I mean, if if Sarge Minhas has one of the most, you know, the most impressive collections I've seen, this guy is way up there too, um, and he has always 
at the DC Pen Show. Last year, he was right across from Richard Binder. So if you're if you've got that Hemingway on your mind and you're going to be in DC, I'll point you towards his table next time. Good, I'll hold you to that. All righty. Who knows what else I'll be looking for, Mister Smith? Tell us about your <laughs> adventures at the Chicago Pen Show. Well, Thursday I got there a few hours before you did, and that's when they uh, they had it on the 12th floor in some meeting rooms. And um, right away I saw Sarge, and uh, we we started talking about the the pens that he had brought. And he only had I think one or two cases laid out at that time, but still I easily spent an hour just drooling over his stuff. Um, th- Thursdays is really small; there, there's not a lot of people there. And you you showed up a little bit later in the evening. Did did you actually get to see any of Sarge's pens? No. He was at the table when we walked in, and we were looking to get my uh, my registration badge. And by the time we made it past that room, he had departed. So didn't get to see anything. Okay. On Thursday. On Thursday. On Thursday, Okay. right. And then uh, Friday, it was down in the ballroom and in the little, uh, I don't know, what's that area outside the, the ballroom called? Yeah. And... There was uh, someone with some some really cool rod stock, and I, I took some pictures and, and posted it on our Facebook album. I, I'm I'm gonna put that on our website, but it, it's that old uh, snakeskin cellular. Right, and I want to say they were from Scotland. Or at least one yes, of the I, men I think they behind were. the table was from Scotland. Yeah, because we did talk to him later in the weekend and uh he also had a very cool vintage conway stewart peacock that i took a picture of and i was totally mesmerized by the colors in this pen i mean just the the blues the purples and the greens i mean beautiful beautiful pen and so you purchased that right (laughs) <laughs> no, oh, I, I did not i didn't even ask the price because i was you didn't even ask it was no um, oh, you got might ask. have been a hundred bucks dan yeah <laughs> and so i i moved on and i found a guy selling a bunch of parker stuff he actually had the dies that parker used to make clips oh, yeah. uh nibs um, just all kinds of the, the metal parts for the pens. I mean, mm-hmm. in s- several different sets. He had them for uh, the 51s, for vacuumatics, for dual folds. I mean, it was it was unreal. And that was Parker75.com. Yeah, I that believe was Lee, so. That was Lee Chait. Yeah. And uh, how many of those I mean, did he, you buy? He just had some of the coolest parts. <laughs> None. Yeah, there, was, okay. there was no way I was going to buy that stuff. I, mean, I, I can't use that. What am I going to do it's with it? It's a paperweight, really. Um, no, I, I didn't ask him the price. I was going to say, you could make a bunch of Parker clips and then get sued for copyright infringement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were cool, though. I and, saw them, too. Yeah, yeah, pretty neat. And then um, that that was about all for, for Friday, really. Um, Saturday, uh, it really picked up. There was a, a lot more traffic in there. And did they open the entire ballroom on Saturday? Um, uh, yes. You're, yes. Okay, because on Friday we only had like two thirds right. of it. Friday was two thirds, yeah. and then Saturday, Sunday was the whole ballroom. And so there was a, a lot more vendors in there. Um, there was a, a really cool vintage ink bottle display. Did you guys see this? I did on the on the round table near the front. Right. Um, it just had all kinds of vintage ink bottles from all kinds of different brands. Um, and there was one. I swear it was. Uh, I think it was a, a Waterman ink bottle. It was like a gallon. I mean, it was it was huge. I mean, it was it was literally you know that big around and like that tall. I mean, that was probably like two gallons or something. But uh, it was like a little museum on a tabletop. It was, and he even had a, a little information packet that he put together. And um, I haven't had a chance to read through it yet, but the display was very cool. I took a few pictures of that. I don't know if he has a website, but I'm pretty sure it's called the Diamond Ink Company. Is that? Who the okay. dis- who, who the display was, or well, I'm looking at the photo right now, and I remember that it said Diamond Ink Company, and I'm not sure if that's an ink that he had displayed or if that's who he is. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Maybe, for maybe sure a about quick that. googling would answer that question. I'm not sure either, but I know he was passing out some information, and I think you got some, right, Dan? Yeah, I did. I I picked up his little information packet, and uh, oh well, I I totally skipped over the the pin auction on Friday night, so we. We went out to dinner with uh, Brian and Lisa and had some great pizza. And then we went to the auction. And what was the big seller? It was a, a blue on blue dual fold lapis set, right? Yes. And, and there was a gentleman in the crowd and then another gentleman on a telephone. And they were going at it. Um, $100 you know, at before, a time. 
Yeah, hundred dollars at a time. And and before the pin even started, um, the auctioneer said, you know, I remember when this pin would sell for two thousand dollars, and I, I believe they started bidding at what, like six or seven hundred dollars. It was low, yes. And it, it kind of went up a little bit. It, it stopped around fifteen hundred, um, and then it picked up again, and it sold for twenty four hundred dollars. Twenty four hundred dollars. The the room was. was Kind of, you know, surprised and and you know, excited, and and everyone was clapping. It was it was a really cool moment to be in. Um, and it was the it was the person bidding via telephone that actually got it, won it. Yeah, he did. He or she, we well, don't know. <laughs> right, right, we don't know. Um, and I would say the only other piece that was as competitive was that authenticated uh, George Parker letter. Right. It was a, a three-page letter. And I guess it it confirmed a lot of uh, theories in in the pen community, and this was uh, between two gentlemen in the room. And I think it ended up selling for five hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, I was gonna say five hundred, yeah. Five hundred, yeah. And so f for a letter, you know, I mean, this is not even a pen. It's not like he used this pen or anything. It's just a letter that he signed, and I mean, pretty important piece of uh, memorabilia. Yeah. It belongs in a museum somewhere, but now I guess I don't know what they're going to do with it. <laughs> Hang it on their wall, I, I'm I guess. I'm assuming it's just going to go yeah, yeah. into the guy's private collection. But uh, so the auction was really cool. Um, I'll definitely attend it next year just to see what happens. I'll try not to. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to miss those good deals. Come on, you 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 got to you you got to maybe for what a hundred dollars you said. Well, I had to pay the ten percent commission. You know, the the buyers. Buyer's fee or whatever it is. So it was 110. So it was a screaming uh, yeah. you, good you deal. Still, you still screaming made out. Deal. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and so then Sunday, the last day of the show, um, is I, I think I spent most of my time at Sarge's table because <laughs> every time I would go back, I would find something new that I didn't see before. And one very cool thing that he had there was a Swan Jack Daw. And it has like a, a red. Marble ebonite with this gold overlay that um, has, has very intricate details. And I, I took a picture of it, and it's, and it's in our album. And it was it was just one of the most beautiful pins I'd ever seen. And he had a whole tray of Watermans. He had a fifty-eight in there with a number eight size nib. And I mean, his his Waterman selection was unbelievable. And then Eric, we found that guy with the vintage Mont Blanc. Yes, we did. And you, you tried to make me buy a pen there. <laughs> well, he had this really cool. Was it was it hexa hexagonal six sided pin or was it six eight? Six or eight, and it looked like a and, Coeco. Yeah, hmm. but it was a, a safety filler. It was one of the coolest Mont Blancs I'd ever seen. I tried to get you to buy it, but uh, you didn't go for it. No, but I was itching for but it. Anyways, he he also had a baby yes, Mont Blanc, and I had never seen one of those before either. I had never even heard about this. I haven't seen pictures. I, I knew nothing about this pen until I saw it. And it has a, a double lot sized nib. I mean, the thing is tiny. And I huh. took a picture of that compared to a Waterman 20 with a number 10 size nib that he had at the table. And the, the two side by side is, is just <laughs> hysterical. <laughs> yeah, I, and I forget so. the price on that baby because I know I asked about it. I think the Mont Blanc baby he was asking like 1600 for. Yeah. That's because the Waterman 20 he wanted 2000. Wow. So yeah. But nice pens. Nice pens at his Gorgeous table. pens. Yeah. Gorgeous pens. And I actually spent a lot of time at uh Mike Masuyama's table. And I, I believe you you sat down there a few times as well, yeah, right I, Eric? I could have had lunch there. I don't know. <laughs> I I could have spent a whole day there. I mean, Mike is so nice. He's he's so friendly, and I I love that when he's working on your pen, he explains what he's doing, and and he shows you. I mean, he'll he'll make an adjustment, and then he'll you know hand the pen to you in, in his loop and say, okay, look at this. This is what I did. This is what it's gonna do for you, and and then you write with it and and said okay, and then you say you know well maybe a little more wet and and you know maybe a little more line variation, and then you hand it back and he does it, and I mean it's a great experience. I had uh, three pens adjusted by him. My my Twisby Micarta, my Pelican M600 with the double broad nib. I had it turned into a stub, and 
one more that I'm forgetting. I don't remember either, but you told me. And I said, well, it's like you're walking away with three new pens. And it, that's exactly what it was. I mean, he, he completely transforms the nib. It's like a brand new pen. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, he is amazing. And he does it right there on the spot. And that's of oh, yeah. the only time I see him is in Chicago. I suppose he's in Washington, yes, Mr. Gray? He, he should he be actually, there. Mike, yeah, sorry, Mike Mike does a heck of a job. I mean, he's from Georgia. He drove to Georgia. I'm sorry, he drove from Georgia to Chicago. So oh. he does, trust me, if he can make that Chicago drive, he can easily make that D.C. drive. <laughs> and I, I don't think he's ever missed D.C. any time in the last three, four years. So I would anticipate Mike to definitely be there. Yeah, cause I, sure. I, I, and he also goes to Dallas as well. Uh, I save my pens. Yeah. Until I see him. Because I don't want to send them. Yeah. I'd rather watch him do it. Right. I can live with him until I see him. It's, yeah, I save my yeah. pens for him. And Brian Anderson just mentioned that he will be in Columbus in the chat as well. Uh, yeah. And Philly. Yeah. I mean, generally, Mike doesn't miss a show. He, I, he's never been and to L.A. It's, that it's I know always, of. I'm sorry? I've never seen him in L.A. Well, that, that's, that's true. He, 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 he doesn't do L.A., but uh, I think that his grinding machine is now a more compact thing that he can collapse. So you might see him going to shows that he can fly to as well. But, um, you know, I think that his backlog is usually usually about 12 weeks. But how cool is right. it to go to a show and then it's done immediately and you get a little lesson and you meet the guy at the same time. And his wife, yeah. that is his wife sitting next to him. And they, yes, they met correct. in San Diego uh, when he was a surfer dude. Uh, I didn't know he was a surfer, dude. Uh, he probably still is, if, except oh, he's come on, far away from the water, though. <laughs> All right. I, I smell geek of the week. I think I need to know more about Mike Masayama, because oh, okay. I okay. never knew he was Absolutely. a surfer, dude. Yeah, he's a surfer. He was. At least he was. Oh, that is cool. And um, So the, the only other tray that I, I want to point out was uh, we, we stopped by Gary Lear's table. You know, that's, that's a mandatory stop at the pin show. He had a tray of vintage Pelicans with a Toledo in there. That he was asking six thousand dollars for. Who was this again? Gary, Go Pens. Oh, Gary, Gary from GoPens. dot com. Yep. Yep. And I mean, and it was it was one you know, obviously wow. at that price it was one of the original Toledos, um, right? And I imagine I I I know Gary asks and gets uh, top dollar for the pens, and those pens are always in perfect condition. Um, Absolutely. Uh, I'm just very glad that the Pelican Toledos don't interest me at all. <laughs> I know it. Oh, I'd be I'm in so, so much I'm so glad trouble. that's not an addiction of mine. <laughs> but the whole so tray was beautiful, and I'm sure we put a picture up. I think we tweeted a picture on that one. We did. Yeah. Gary's table is always fun, isn't it? Cause it's, that, it's a blast. Another man. He's got so he, much he, stuff. He's another man who's a pen show in a box, and every single one is wonderful. We also ran into fans. And I'm probably not going to yes, remember all their several. names. I know we saw Patrick. Um, yes. Uh, Mike. We spent some time talking to Mike. Um, Steven. Which one was Steven? Was he the McCarta kid? Yes. Okay. And Laura. Laura was the one who won uh, the VAC 700 giveaway. Yeah. And she had her kids there, yes, too. And uh, I ran into her accidentally at Pendleton Brown's table. Oh. Laura, I guess we shouldn't give out last names, but Laura S., right? Um, I don't recall because the last she, name. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I'm sorry. She's a client of mine as well, so I'm sure. Oh, yes, and that was had, her because we talked about you. Yeah, if, if we – if uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I just I, – I, I don't want to give away someone's last name here on, on a broadcast. But, yeah, she's been a client of mine for a long time, and I was so happy to meet her for the first time. That's one of the other reasons that I love doing pen shows is it's so funny how, especially with, um, you know, everybody knows everybody from their handle on the FPN or on uh, Fountain Pen Geeks Forum or on all these places. And then when you finally get to meet them live, it's like, wait a second, because half the time, because I usually know people by their real name when they're emailing me, and I never really put two and two together and figure out who they are and their handles are. And then when I actually meet them live and then I put those two together, it's like, you know, my mind just leaked out my ear. But anyways. Yeah, I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah, and didn't somebody hear you talk? Weren't you at Mike's table, Mr. Gray, talking to Mike? I, and somebody overheard your voice and said, "Hey, you're Brian Gray." Well, <laughs> that's the other benefit about doing video <laughs> blogs and doing these radio broadcasts is that I walked up to this guy and he said, "You know, you have to be Brian Gray." I'm like, "Yeah, how are you doing?" And he goes, "You know what? I, I was facing away from you and I heard your voice and I just kind of..." perked up and I was like that's got to be Brian Gray and he turned around and he said there he was and there's Brian so anyways that was kind of neat people know me by my voice I must have a, an amazing broadcaster voice <laughs> this real nasally thing that is very unique 
Welcome to Fountain Pen Geeks Radio. <laughs> so, so that was the pen show, because then we all left. So, but, so go over that. Now, hang on, hang on. I, I have an acquisition. You do? You had a trade. I do. Wait a minute. We, we haven't what? finished Dan's yet. Dan, what'd you walk away with? <laughs> what do you mean what From I walked away show, with? the pen show, what'd you walk away with? You know, we already went through what I purchased. I actually didn't buy a single pen at the Isn't pen show. Isn't that amazing? That's it, crazy. But you know, it's, it's not a requirement to buy a pen at the terrible. pen show. You can go you know, and you can have a great time at a pen show and see a whole bunch of cool pens and actually don't – it's not a requirement to buy a pen. Well, it's – it almost is actually. And I I feel bad that I didn't. The The one at Sarge's table that I was I was this close to buying was um, Danny Trio Ginke. And it was – I mean it's, it's the huge, long, you know, like baseball bat looking fountain pen. <laughs> That's um, a tree trunk pen. <laughs> Yeah, it is. And I he had it in LA. I fell in love with it there and I was like, well, you know, it won't be that big of a deal because there's no way he's going to have it in Chicago. There it was. And then I saw it there and I was like, gosh, dang it. So, um Just wait, it'll be in DC. I know it. You know, <laughs> yeah, and gonna... maybe I'll have time to save up for it, but uh I, I just time couldn't around. The trigger. It was I don't I don't know. Maybe I was sick or something was wrong with me. Maybe it was the food there or something, but uh I tried to convince you to get that pen. I know. Tried. And he came down in price just for you too. Yeah, he did. You know he what? Did. I think it's I think honestly it's a unique pen and I'll bet you you'll have an opportunity in DC and then maybe also in LA. I don't think it's a it's 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 a very unique pen that doesn't appeal to the masses generally because it is so big, but you're a big pen fan. So oh, yeah. I'll bet you, I'll bet you I'll bet you that Sarge will hang on to it, or he he probably won't manage to sell it for a well, while. Plus, is it? Is well, it's he's, a, he said it, he it, hold on it, to it for it, me, and it, I was like, no, I don't want to, you know, prevent you from selling it. You know, I I, I don't know when I'm going to have the money. You know, I I appreciate it, but you know, if if you can sell it, sell doesn't, it. Doesn't so, he do layaway? <laughs> I, I, I don't know about that. I have I have a prediction. Oh no! I I, I yeah 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 another <laughs> prediction. I think that that pen. Well, no, it's not a prediction. I'm just going to say that I think that that pen has your name on it, but you just don't know it yet. Well, if it's in L.A., <laughs> it has to be, it, or D.C. Yeah, yeah. even. But that's a raw ebonite, right? That's the one that's raw. It is. It's, it's polished raw ebonite. Polished raw ebonite. Which makes it quite a bit cheaper than the Rushi finished one. Yeah, and then when you're, yeah. when you're, when you're sick, when you, after you buy it and you're, you're done with enjoying the raw ebonite, you send it to Ernest. Have something really <laughs> nice put on That's it. true. Hey, yeah, someone in the chat, uh, J- Just Davey B asked, does unique equal ugly? And not, no, 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 not by any means. It's a unique pen in that it's clipless, it's huge, it's long, and it's wide. And, and if I'm not mistaken, it's also got a monster yes, nib it, on it, well, too. Well, it's the same it as the Mikado, so, so I, I think it's I mean, an eight. You, you need to have a large hand, and that's what I meant by unique. Yeah, I don't think that it has mass appeal because it's so, so it big. It doesn't fit in your shirt right. pocket. But it's beautiful. Yeah. No, this would strictly be a at home. Yes, it's desk a desk pen. pen. Unless you get a I mean, And just in just in case you were assaulted on the way out of a pen show, you could beat the hell out of somebody with it. You you beat them with that it's one like and I'll stick. stab them with my NYU. <laughs> which I was afraid they might not let me take on the plane because that one really does look like a weapon. Okay, yeah, so Dan walked know. away with no new pen but three new grinds on previously owned pens, and that's just the same yep. as getting three new pens. Mr. Gray, you walked away with an acquisition? I did. It was a Here, yeah. You that's can, right. You guys know what it is. Ooh, that looks that's very nice. It smells sir. like a, Did we all get blue? We all got blue. What's that? I got a blue oh, one. Right. Dan has a blue one. Are you holding up yours, Eric? I'm trying to. There it is, right there. Just all so right. We're, very we're, nice. We're, we're triplets now. I would say we're Twisby <laughs> fans, huh? <laughs> So yeah, I mean, um, from my standpoint, a uh, a, a nice looking vacuum filler for eighty dollars, eighty five dollars. How can you how can you pass that up? So I had to get one. I got a broad nib. I haven't decided yet what I want to do with it. Maybe I'll grind it to an italic. Um, the broad kind of writes a little bit more like a medium though, but I have no problems with that at all. I usually buy broad nibs just because I can do whatever I want with them later on. But uh, I'm real happy with it. It's it's a great pen. It's got a monstrous ink capacity. And I remember you guys, uh, Dan, you mentioned some strategies for getting it completely filled, and I can't remember what that is, but we'll talk later. And right, unless you want to actually, I did try it tonight, and uh, it it works. I mean, I get a full barrel with it now. So I think but, I think uh, you put that on your video tutorial, right? I I did, but I did it incorrectly because I didn't okay. actually know the correct technique. Um, it, I I'm not going to explain it or try to explain it because it's a little difficult. I mean, yeah. just uh, head head to our 
video page and look up someone posted a link to the correct video on how to do it and uh it, it's very simple and cool. yeah full barrel every time and the correct I'll the correct method video the video that shows the correct method was actually posted by twisby wasn't it no oh. it was by someone else with a pilot custom uh 823 oh, okay i'll have to go check that out but you know i well, don't necessarily keep, keep, need keep the whole mind. barrel full you guys really want that's that? what i was going to say if, right. if, if you look if, if you look at this my barrel is about half full right now and it's still gotta be like two milliliters you know it's still it's, gotta it's be like, it's cl yeah, actually it's, closer to 1.1 but still it's, when, when, it's gonna when last it's completely nine filled months. or a typical no, fill? When, when it's when it's half full because okay like a full barrel is like 2.1 i think well, 1.1 1. Right. 1 is still more than twice of a standard converter. So, I mean, come on, it's this is yeah. still a monster fill. Yeah. And and I would never run run that dry. I no. mean, the, the, as often as I use a fountain pen, uh, any pen, and like as many pens as I have inked and stuff. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. And then while I was there, I was actually quite tempted by uh, uh, Rick Propass had three. Um, Coecos, uh, vintage Coecos Sports. that were piston fillers. Yeah, that I was really oh, tempted by, but, but they they all had like left foot oblique grinds. All three and of them. I, it wasn't a huge deal for me because I don't mind a left foot oblique, but you know, and, and the price was right as well. I think he was asking one fifty, which I think is awfully oh, okay. fair on those. And yeah. he, maybe he would have come down a little bit on it, but I was tempted, and then I thought, no, let's just see how well we do at the show. And we did fine, but then by the time we got all packed up on Sunday, we were in a rush, and I wasn't going to get it back He has a it. website. They're available there. And, I, and he'll, <laughs> also be, he'll also be in D.C. All, uh, as well. That was actually the first pen I saw on Friday because he was right there at the front door. And, oh, and yeah, I was that's looking right. for him because right. I wanted on my list, I wanted to see a Kaweco uh, Elite and I also wanted an interesting uh, safety filler. So I wanted to see if he maybe had a Coeco safety filler. Uh, but he had those piston fillers. And yeah, at 150 bucks, I was about to take one, except all three of them had the, the oblique nibs. And I just didn't want to do that. It's funny how we we're all looking at the same pens. <laughs> hmm. And if you guys don't mind, obviously, I'm not going to be promotional with this. I was really happy to see uh, Sarge Minhas had a pen that I made for a client very early on uh, when I first started the Edison Pen Company. Someone, um, someone had a Paul Rossi overlay that was intended for a Mont Blanc 149 and didn't want it to be on the 149 anymore. So he sent it off to me and said, build a pen around it and um, do whatever you want. Make it yours and be creative and do whatever you want with it. And so he also sent me a big number eight nib and I outfitted that. And this was probably like five or six years ago. And then... Um, Sarge uh, looked me up at the pen show and said, by the way, I've got something you got to see. Mm -hmm. I said, what's that? And he said, take a look at this. And I think someone alerted me earlier, was it Eric, that he had this. And it was me. just really cool. Well, someone said, Sarge has got a pen that you got to, I think it was Dan, there you go. Sarge has got a pen that you got to check out. And it was really cool to see a pen, first of all, um, having having a Paul Rossi overlay on something that, that I made or that I was able to make, that's a cool thing, period. But to see something that I haven't seen for six years and then to go back and take another look at it, and I also was kind of flattered because Sarge was like, no, I'm not selling this, I'm not selling this. So it just made me feel good to see something that I did a real long time ago, and I was super proud of it back then, and I still am today. So it was kind of a neat little, you know, pat myself on the back uh, uh, to see that pen again. And I told Sarge, you're not allowed to sell it. You know, I want to... <laughs> I want to visit at least three or four shows in the future and see that pen again, you know? So, and he said, and I, I think he was serious that he doesn't want to that's sell it. That's what he it, told so. me. It's a yeah, beautiful pen. Yeah, he said that's going into his personal yeah. collection. That's cool. He was, he was very cool excited good. about that pen. That's um, neat. Yeah, and I don't know. Two owners. The, ori the original owner sold it to, to Sarge. I think that he was going to put it up on Pen Trace. And then Sarge emailed him and said, hey, what are you doing? You told me that was mine. <laughs> so. Anyways, like I said, at the risk of patting my own back, I was real, real happy to see that pen. It made me, it made me, it made me feel pretty good. It was beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Great. Yeah, thank you. Thank goodness it wasn't for sale. <laughs> so, <laughs> after Chicago, we went to Camp Edison. Yes, we took a drive. We took a road trip. And thank it's you guys for making the drive. It was, it was, it was All a right. lot of fun. Kid me. How how could we be that close and, and, and not, not visit? Go visit. Well, just remember, if you come to the Columbus show, remember that because the, inv the invitation is wide yeah, open Mr. to come Gray. up after that show. <clears throat> Honestly, yes, here in front of everybody who's listening, what, do we have three listeners? I need at least three witnesses. 
<laughs> no, we well we have like nine people registered and like sixteen it's, that are. We've we've that been are, going for uh, forty five yes, minutes and we're too. only up to Camp Edison. We we certainly overstayed our welcome. No, not at all. Oh, we we drove. I did. No, you didn't. <laughs> you left. You left right no. away. But I missed most of the good stuff. <laughs> no, unfortunately, I, Dan had to leave Tuesday morning. So if you guys can imagine. Working and participating in a pen show is just exhausting. You know, it's morning, day, and then, you know, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock when you pack up. Then you go out to dinner and you have good dinner with friends. And, you know, you just never stop. So Sunday night, now we, we had to get home a little bit early because uh, my, my, uh, my in-laws were watching Andrew and they had to work Monday morning. So the Fountain Pen Geeks, along with Juan Carlos and myself and my wife, all, you know, we jumped into two cars and we just like sped to Ohio as fast as we could. And we got home around 10 o'clock. And then the very very next day, after an exhausting <laughs> pen show, we're out in the shop at nine o'clock. Yeah. So it, but it was it was well worth it. You know, it's it's not a, it's it's a, it's a non typical day for me because it's fun to have people out there with me, and <clears throat> got to make some neat pens for you guys as well. They were long I think days, it was, though. It was an awesome I think time. they were longer they were. than your normal days. Because oh, definitely. first of all, we yep. made you explain everything you were doing, and you, you gave us a <laughs> tour of every now, little. Yes, go ahead. Now <laughs> that I think about it. Maybe you guys did overstay your welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and then we made you take us to dinner every night. Oh yeah, that was cool. No, that was all there right. Were lunches and dinners, and it was just a nonstop party. And I'm just so glad to be home. I tell you. And Dan, we we forgot we forgot to tell you you missed out on the wondrous, the most wonder, uh, the most wonderful pizza you could ever have: sauerkraut and bacon it was by amazing. Cameo Pizza. And stuff. It was one. I mean, when I first tried it, I thought, nah, uh, never, uh, ever. Sauerkraut and bacon. And then I took a bite. And, it was a, I, and I'm hooked on this. I've, I've lived in Sandusky for probably 16 years, and I found this sauerkraut and bacon about 12 years ago. Cameo Pizza, Sandusky, Ohio, sauerkraut and bacon. They're sponsoring the show this week. But no, that's <laughs> even more of a reason to go to Ohio than the Edison Pen Company is this sauerkraut and bacon pizza. <laughs> it was delicious I'll, I'll take your word for it we also got care packages we got two care packages adam sent a package of chocolate and graham crackers that we had a nice little those. cookout and around a beautiful the fire card pit. a beautiful note every time adam <laughs> sends something it's it's in beautiful writing that i try to emulate yep. but i'm not there yet and then we got a bottle of spirits from pen pazzo uh, yes that, that very nice kept our spirits up let me tell you so i have to say thank you thank you very much and then we made pens, but we did we we didn't we didn't make pens after we had the spirits, if you know what I mean. Well, <laughs> well, depends. Well, dep- <laughs> depends. <laughs> depends on who's running the machine, who's not running the machine. And I didn't realize uh, I didn't realize how relaxing it was to be at Camp Edison until after I got home, because on the last day of Camp Edison, somebody took a picture of me at Camp Edison enjoying a fountain pen, and I just, you know, I knew it was rejuvenating, and I felt really like I was having fun, but I didn't realize it was also the fountain of youth, and I'll have to, I'll post this picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll have to put that up. Now, obviously, that's not me, uh, and your son already came into the shot, so he ruined my joke there, but uh, I, I just... Oh, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> see, I, I can't see what you have on the live broadcast, so I didn't know what picture you're referring to. I got you now. Uh, oh, well, why can't you see the live broadcast? Just we'll, we'll do an aside. Uh, here. Well, why can't you see I, the live? Can you see it, Dan? I, yeah, I'm watching. Oh, okay. It. No, I I could, but I don't want to hog up my bandwidth, and I'm oh, also afraid of feet. That's why too. you're coming in so nicely today. Anyway, this is a picture of of Andrew Gray enjoying a pen that I believe was sent to him from Lisa Anderson Pen Collectors Pen Collectors of America from the the pen exactly. for kids. That was. That was part of the PCA for kids. They obviously do some great things. Um, you know, we need to make sure that younger younger people are involved in pens, and that's part of what the PCA does. So, obviously, you've got a devotee right here under my roof. Yeah. Um, and he's quite a he's quite a character, isn't he, Mister Gray? He's just a little chip off the old block. He is. So let me let me. What are two stories that I can tell about Andrew? The first night we went out to dinner, he kept us all in stitches with jokes. Oh my gosh, well, that kid is so <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> what was your favorite? Because I remember mine. Uh, why did the star go to the bathroom? Yes. Why? Because he had to twinkle. <laughs> <laughs> what was yours? That's my boy. <laughs> What's that? Uh, yours, Ryan? I think that was my oh. favorite, actually. Yeah, but, you that know, was it's, mine. It's, I'm, I'm real proud, though, because he also, he, I mean, he didn't make that one up. Someone told him that, but he makes up jokes. And it's, it's like there's always a little, it's like, how did your brain figure that one out, you know? And 
It's just uh, well, and then yeah. at the same anyway. dinner, he's sitting next to you, to Andrea, your wife, and they decide mm-hmm. to play hangman. And she writes out all these dashes oh, on the oh, paper yeah, yeah, for yeah. the words, and he looks at it. He says, "Fountain pens." And it was fountain yeah. pens. And she said, oh, okay, it, it, we're going to try it, it, again. And she writes out a whole other set of lines. He looks at it. He says, Tom and Jerry. And I'm going, how does he know this? He's wearing a Tom and Jerry T-shirt. And he somehow has figured out that his mother is getting the words for hangman from somewhere in the environment. And he's matching yep. the two. Amazing. And then you weren't there anymore, Dan. I'm sorry. But when we went out for that pizza, the... Uh, the sauerkraut and bacon pizza. Uh, afterwards, we had planned to go to the drive through ice cream parlor in Milan, Ohio. And Brian mm-hmm. wanted to mention that to me at the table, but apparently he didn't want Andrew to know we were going to go get ice cream. Uh, so he says, after dinner, we're going to go get that frozen milk, whatever it was he said. He didn't use the word. Milk, sugar, yes. and cream. He used all those. And Andrew looked up and he said, we're going to get ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> and so Brian and Andrea say, we can't spell anymore. We can't use pig Latin. We can't use the ingredients. And I say, well, you should say it in Spanish. So Brian says, what is it in Spanish? And I said, helado. And Andrew says, maybe I should write that down. <laughs> <laughs> He's six years old. He says, maybe I should yeah. write that down. Anyway. Kid is yeah. smart as a whip, man. Uh, Camp well, Edison was you. fantastic. Uh, I think in total we made six pens. We did. We lots it was, of, it lots was, of it was a very productive couple days. Pens. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll probably be back. So watch out. <laughs> I know where you live now. Well, like I said, the, the the invitation is always wide open, guys. If you want to plan around Chicago show, Columbus show, um, even DC, if you want to make a seven or so hour drive after the show, you're welcome to. So anytime. Fantastic. Well, you know, I uh, th- these were my my first Edison pens that I purchased, and and I'm sorry, Brian, that it took me so long to finally get one. But I don't know what the heck see, I was see, waiting for. The fingers <laughs> waggling at you. <laughs> I mean, this this pen, I got the the Huron Grande Herald. With, is this is the Herald? Herald. Yep. Okay, I'm sorry. With sorry. the the snake clip, and is it just called green ebonite? Is that the material? You know, I would call that like a modeled green ebonite. And it it is just gorgeous. I love it. Um, it is an amazing pen. As it as, I, we, I as it came to it life, down. it just got more beautiful and more beautiful and more beautiful. And and then the other one I made for my wife was a extended uh, pearl. Pearl. And yep. yep. That that turned out beautiful. She loved it. Um, I can definitely see us adding more Edisons to my collection. Yeah, join the club. Very cool. Join the club. Very. Cool. I made well. You've I, already got like what six well, this now. This is my first uh, Edison that is. Uh, what do you call this, Brian? Because all the three that you've made for me before, I've changed. You know, they're all elongated, special ones, and this is a pearl. Usually, your orders pearl. are just a complete pain in the neck, right, and these right. were just sock <laughs> orders. <laughs> and I wasn't so different at, at Camp Edison yeah. because I picked the only material that you really didn't have. You were yeah, searching all over the shop. To see if you could find just one more piece of this, what are you going to call it? Is this a blue and gold checkered? Uh, blue, blue, yeah, blue, blue, gold, blue checkered. gold checkered. And by the way, the, there is a story behind this too. And now that, uh, I've, Dan, now that I'm I've, showing this to everybody, they're all going to want it, and you don't yeah. have any more. This is the last of it. No, I, I, I can get it. And actually, my supplier just sent me a package yesterday that has a new sampler of a green version of that, kind of like a green gold. That's pretty special wow. too. But he should be getting more of the blue gold. But the interesting thing, though, is, Dan, again, I'm, I'm sorry. We're going to tell you all this stuff that you missed because you had to leave a little early. Um, on, I think it was Tuesday, Andrea was putting the final touches on, my wife was putting the final touches on that pen. On the barrel. And dropped it and cracked the cap, or cracked, cracked the uh, barrel lip where the section screws in. Oh, my gosh. And so she turned red. Yeah, she wasn't I mean, of happy. Course, I- if, if, if you can imagine, when, when we're working, we drop pens, you know, and if there's damage, we just make another, whatever, no big deal. But we had to scour the shop to find these two little pieces, and we only had literally like a quarter of an inch left when we made, I just had enough to make his pen. So, and she wow. knew that. So she turned red, and she kind of, she probably cussed, and she's a little angry. <laughs> and, and I'm thinking, man, where on earth? Because we looked all over the shop to find what we had. And then finally, uh, I, I found one little scrap that was left that was just enough to make another barrel. And so we got the, the extra barrel made, and he, he walked out with it. And, and I took the cracked one, too. Yeah. 
Yeah, poor Andrea. She felt so bad uh, about dropping that. She was very mad at herself, and I was okay. I said, "No, no, we'll just make a different barrel, different a, a different material. Doesn't matter." You know, so, but she was not happy with herself. But well, it all worked it all out. Worked when, out. I, when, I, when I found that extra little stick, I think that she she said like a an anvil or is it off of her shoulders at this point. So that was Camp Edison. Then I flew home yeah. on Thursday, and here we are today. And uh, shall we move on now? Are we done with Camp yeah. Edison? Well, okay. first of all, first of all, thanks for coming, guys. Thanks it was for a having lot of fun. Us. Oh, I thank you like so having much visitors. for having us. Yep, and the invitation is open. And we did so. get to go out and take a few pictures. We did as so well. So Wednesday yep. was a beautiful day. The sunshine, nice clouds, a nice picture-taking day. And so we sort of took it easy on that day, kind of. <laughs> Kind of. Okay. Um, where are we going, Mr. Smith? Well, let's head to the website. Um, we had a pretty, I would say, important poll question last week. Um, we, we've been getting a lot of suggestions, you know, about what we should focus our time on, and that's really what this poll was about. Um, said, uh, which FP Geeks feature should be a weekly top priority? And the choices were the Awesome Review, uh, FP Radio and Podcast, the Geek of the Week, or video commentary for the Sunday Shopper. And um, for the majority of the time the poll was up, it was very close between the Awesome Review and FP Radio podcast. Um, the, the Awesome Review did pull ahead with 45% of the votes, followed up by the FP Radio and podcast with 39%. Um, further way, which actually surprised me, was Geek of the Week with only 13% of the votes and 3% for the video commentary on the Sunday Shopper. So, Eric, what, what do you think about the results? Um, I was surprised that Geek of the Week got only 13%. I was too. And uh, as you say, the Awesome Review and FP Radio and Podcast were neck and neck the whole time. I don't know when this changed to 39% and 45%, but they were within two percentage points. So it really just tells us that the vast majority of our audience likes both the Awesome Review and FP Radio and the Podcast. So, you know, time is limited, so we have to know what to concentrate on. And so these are the two things that we should be concentrating on. Right. And, I mean, we, we do an awesome review, you know, when there's a pen that we really like and want to do a review of, or when something new comes out and we, and we know the public's going to demand a review of it. Um, and, and so we make it a priority then. But uh, I guess from here on out, we're just going to have to do it more often. Yeah, apparently it's popular. Very popular. And I like them. I like, I I do like too. awesome reviews. I love doing them. They're just, you know, there's a lot of work and effort goes into them, and and so we just gotta, you know, make that a priority now. Have you answered the new poll question yet, Mr. Smith? I have, and the the new question is, what's the most you've ever spent on a fountain pen? And I answered between five and seven hundred dollars. I so, I answered whatever I put. Uh, eight twenty five is the most I've ever spent on a pen. So whatever that put me in, was that eight to a oh. eight to a grand or something? Seven to a grand. Seven to a grand. Yeah. Yep. So we, we yeah, won't good ask. Question. We won't ask Mr. Gray. He doesn't. He my doesn't. most expensive pen was my uh, Twisby five forty. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you you I trade have, for I have pens. Back some pens and we there. know that's not true. You trade for pens. I did, who said I bought it? That's right. You trade for pens. Uh, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure that they don't mind. Lisa Anderson came over to the table and said, "I love that." Actually, I think that she put it up on her website. She saw a pearlette and a beautiful new blue material that I need to to make uh, to, to promote a little bit. And I said, "Well, how about if you trade me for a Vac 700?" And she said that was a great idea. So, Brian, I think you're listening. Tell tell Lisa that I said big thank you, and I'm loving the Vac. See, I would have traded you a Vac 700 for that pet. <laughs> well. <laughs> We can talk. We can talk. Okay, let's speed through the news, mm. shall we? Absolutely. So um, this is exciting. Well, that's about two weeks ago. Um, yeah, Frank Christoph, they announced they're going to release two new desk pins, and these are the pins that we saw in L.A. That's why this is um, exciting. I'm so excited about. I, I love them in L.A. There's, there's two models: the 65 and the 66. Uh, the 65 is the smaller, shorter one, obviously. It's it's 5.85 inches long. It has the, a number five steel nib, and it's only 125 bucks. Now there is an option to upgrade to an 18 karat gold nib for 75 dollars. So you're getting a gold nib pen for 200 bucks. I mean, heck of a deal. The 66 is larger at 6.3 inches. So I mean, it's you know more than a half inch longer, and it has a larger number six steel nib. 
it's it's going to be a hundred and fifty dollars, and you can upgrade to an eighteen karat nib for for ninety bucks. So it, it makes it two forty with the gold nib. Not bad at all, in my opinion. Um, for, for both pens and both nibs, you have the options of extra fine, fine, medium, rod, and of course the hand ground cursive, italic, or stub nibs by Mike Matsuyama. Um, and there's no extra charge for any of those ground nibs. Uh, these pens are cartridge converter fillers or eye drawers. They will accept short and long cartridges, and they're supposed to be shipping in May. So I don't, I don't know if they're shipping right now, but uh, definitely this month. And I'm, I'm, you know I'm, I was disappointed that uh, Franklin Christoph was not at the Chicago Pen Show, and at the same time, I was rather relieved because I want an entire set of these. I, I know I would have came home with one of these. They are such, they're wonderful pens. I'd, yeah, I, I yeah. like these a lot. I, I'll tell you what I like about this because you know Scott Franklin is always coming up with with pretty unique designs, which is not an easy thing to do as a pen maker. Trust me. You know, I mean, how many, how can you really come up with anything that's that's original? To be honest, because it's all been done before. But uh, what I really like about this is this is you know it, it it has like the length of a desk pen, but it's got a short cap, so it's not like a ridiculously long pen. And the other thing oh, as a the cap sorry, is also postable. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't say that, but go ahead, Brian. That's all right. But the other thing that I really like about this, and this is this is something small and subtle, but it makes a difference. You know, they engineered a flat surface into this pen, so it's a it's a clipless desk pen that really won't roll off your off your desk as easy as a typical clipless pen would. Um, so as as a fellow pen designer, hats off to Scott Franklin and Dan Simons over at uh, Franklin Christoph. These are cool pens. I love these Extremely a lot. Extremely cool. And the other thing I like about yeah. this pen is that the cap threads on to, what do you call that, the neck of the section where the, the nib well, it, goes in? It's, it's the very front of the section. Yeah, yeah, the closest part of the section to the nib itself so that when you're holding the pen, your pen, your fingers are not touching any threads. Yeah, it's just going to be a, a completely smooth transition from sex to barrel. So yeah, I want an entire tester set. Well, Scott, <laughs> if you're listening, nice. call me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, so uh, I'm glad he wasn't there, but, you know, he's going to be in D.C., got, I just know it. So I'll save my pennies between now and then. And something else new is coming out. We got some paper news this week from Rodia. Um, now, the dot pad has been out for a while, but... They just released it in the orange cover, which, you know, options are always nice. It's available in four sizes, the, the 12, 15, 18, and 19. And they the prices range from 275 to 10 bucks. And I actually have one of these in black, and it's, it's really cool paper. Um, sometimes I don't always prefer to have, you know, lines, but then I don't always want a blank sheet either. And, and this fills the gap perfectly. No, I, I love Rodeo paper. Uh, it's my preferred paper, uh, but I've never tried any of their dot paper, so I think I will now. Is there it's, any it's, difference, really? Except, I mean, is the the weight of the paper is no different. It's just the dot pattern, it's just the right? Pattern. Right. Yeah. It helps you course. sketch or draw or even yeah. improve your cursive, I would imagine. So you know, yeah. what? I think that I think that Andrew, my son, would would appreciate these. I should probably buy some for him. That might open up some creative I stuff. I don't know now. if it's available just yet. When does it come out? Oh, okay. Some of them are available, okay. I believe. Yeah, get Andrew's well, out. but they're just—they're just not—they're just, not, just not available oh, in, in the, the orange. orange yeah, version, they're right? available. Yeah, in the black. there's still some black yes, ones. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. All right. Can we talk about uh, the Twisby 850 titanium coating? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, Twisby <laughs> is we? continuing to uh, give us more news and, and updates about the metal 850, and this is—you you see the barrel here with titanium coating. And it's very interesting because apparently they were planning on engraving or milling these lines into the barrel, but decided to go with a titanium coating instead. Um, now, now there are you know I, I like this and I kind of don't like this. The the coating looks very cool. The the contrast um, is very nice and appealing, but I really like that feel that milled lines have in a barrel. Brian, you probably know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, and, so it'll be interesting, interesting to, to see what they go for in the end. But I'm sure this coating probably saves them time and money in the manufacturing process. I think it's pretty cool. In fact, if you all recall, I said I wasn't very interested in the 850. Uh, and in fact, I think Mr. Gray said, predicted that I'll probably end up with one. Uh, it's looking better now with those lines on it. Now, if they mill them, I, I'll have to get one. 
and I'm not sure about the this titanium coating, but the lines not only give it a better look, in my opinion, but they'll help you hold it. It'll be easier to hold and use, not so slippery. I, it's yeah, I'm I'm really getting excited about this pin. I mean, I was excited before, but but seeing this, I had no idea they were going to put this on there. Very cool. And we think this will probably be out in about uh, 2017. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in the uh, meantime, you have to play with Diplomat. And they, yeah, Diplomat. They've released some new fun colors in their uh, Traveler and Esteem pins. Uh, the five colors are Quick Cornflower, Orchid, Pink, and Green. And they're like a pastel color. And it right reminds me a lot of Easter. Does anybody else get that vibe? Yeah, they they look like. Uh... They look like what dyed Easter eggs. I just wonder why exactly. why they call it pink and green, and then got so creative with the aqua cornflower and orchid. Yeah, I don't know. It's because they didn't call me and ask my opinion. What is a cornflower? <laughs> and, and I'm not you sure. You probably know what a cornflower is. I don't. Do the corn, does corn does corn have a flower? I don't. I don't know. I don't know either. Anyway, they're cool little so, pens. Yeah, the the traveler is only sixty five dollars, and the esteem is, is ninety five dollars. Uh, not bad prices at all. Um, I, I've never actually used a diplomat before. I've heard good things about them. So uh, if if you like the color, pick one up and, and let us know what you think about it. Now we're going back to the pen show for a moment because we saw a pen case there that apparently Dan, you are in love with. It's yeah. I mean, you saw it too. What did you think of it? Well, I don't need a 48 pen case. Remember, on my list of things that I wanted to see and perhaps acquire at the pen show was the the perfect pen case. And this one is too big. 48 pens. I hope to never want to carry around 48 pens. I don't mind owning 48 pens, but carrying them around all at one time, I don't want to do. Well, hey, this, <laughs> this pen case is, I mean, now brace yourselves. Okay. It's two hundred and twenty-five dollars. Yeah, but it's forty-eight pens. I mean, how much is the forty-eight pen briefcase uh, from well, Visconti or whomever it is? That's a little different. I mean, that's you know a briefcase and. But it's four hundred some odd dollars, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, this it's the details are are top notch. I mean, the thing is is constructed very well. It's it's made in America. The exterior is made from. One piece of leather. It's available in green, tan, red, or black. And the inside is is probably the best design I've I've ever seen in a fountain pen case. It's really soft, padded, and it has a, a divider that's attached to one side, so it folds over. And it's like I mean, it's like a pillow stuffed in there. I mean, you you can be, um, you know, sure that your your pens aren't going to be hurt at all. And th the straps. Or one thing I really like, it uses two thin straps that only go over the barrel. Because I've got a, a couple pin cases that you got to you know, try and get the clip of the pin over. And sometimes it's awkward. Sometimes pins with tight clips don't like to go over them very well. This makes it a lot easier. And let's see. What else? Oh, I saw several of these at the show. And I didn't realize it. But these were the first design that he had made over 20 years ago. Hmm. So... I mean, just traveling with these cases filled with pins for that long. I mean, these cases looked like they had barely been used. I mean, it was incredible how well they had taken the abuse. So $225 for that kind of quality, durability, and protection, yeah, I'm fine with that. I don't know. Are, are people saying it's a, a high price for that? Yeah, everyone is, is pretty... You know, negative on the price. Uh, not for a forty-eight pen case. What do you pay for a twenty-four pen case? Half this price. They just don't happen to have a twenty-four pen case. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, honestly, I've got a, a not, Franklin Christoph. What is it? There are twenty pen cases, right? What are they? One fifty. Something like that. Or maybe the forties are one fifty. The price is right for a forty-eight pen case, especially one that is really a perfect pen case. I wish they well, made a twenty-four. Not to play devil's advocate here. Go ahead here. and play devil's well, advocate. I, I, I can just I I hang can up on you if I want to, can't I? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, can, you can find a 48 pen case that's a lot less expensive than that, but it's just not the same quality. You know, if you want to have, first of all, here's Dan mentioned the fact that it, that you know the elastic 
uh, grabs onto the barrel. I think that's a very, very good design feature because I, you, when we go to pen shows, we bring almost 300 pens. We need cases like this. We need big ones like this. And I can tell you that when I'm taking, uh, you know, almost 300 pens out of cases, and each one snaps, you know, each each piece of elastic snaps over that. The, the, the uh, sorry snaps under the clip so you know I, I think I'd rather have these now on you know on the other hand it just depends on what you're after this is high end this is beautiful it's it's handcrafted it's very very well made but you know it's it's you know I, I guess that uh, this this would be the handcrafted version of a wonderful beautiful pen versus you know uh, a Lamy Safari you know type pen they both serve a very similar purpose but if you want something that is phenomenal and that will aesthetically please you a lot more, this is a very, very nice looking uh, pen case. And well, this is really for people that travel a lot with their pens and, and that display them. Because a lot of you know vendors at pen shows, they'll just unzip their case, open it up, and lay it on the table. And, and that's how they present the pens. So yeah. something like this, it, it shows them off well. Um, you don't have to worry about people trying to, to get the clips over them. They, they slide out very easily. It and it shows off a lot of the pen. You don't you don't have a big wide you know strap covering up you know maybe certain details on the barrel that you want to show or something. So it, the piece is not for everybody, and I'm not saying it's for everybody, but I, I think the price is justified, and I think the quality is just superb on this case. The, the quality is absolutely amazing, and I would have had one of these if it was a 24 pen case. I just wasn't in the market for a 48 pen case, and the only fault I will give it is that it has only one zipper pull. And I mentioned it. I told them it, oh. it needs a second one, so that from whatever side you are on, you can just open or close the thing. I like. No, that wouldn't bother me. Oh well. I I, I don't have any problem with one zipper pull. No big deal on that if, one for if me. If you're looking for the perfect pen case, it needs to have two zipper pulls. All right. All, all right. right. All right. Where's that button to hang up on, Gray? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the last thing I want to mention before we move on to some whatever we're going to go to is that you made a video, Mr. Smith. You made a Twisby VAC video, <laughs> VAC 700. I'm going to call it the V700. All right, that's fine. And an excellent video. I love it. Is it getting any, was, anybody watching it? I think you've got like... Um, a few people have watched it, I think. People. we got a couple of views. A few. A couple. Come on. How many is it? 16, 1,700? I'm looking, at you, I'm looking at YouTube right now. He's got 1,700, 1700 views. views. I, okay. I don't get that many views on my videos. I'm <laughs> jealous, dude. Oh, oh shut up. <laughs> I only get 25 views per video. Perhaps Dan can do a video on one of your pens. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> so I'll encourage everybody to check out Dan's uh, uh, hands-on with the Twisby V700, the new name. Shall we go on to mail? Uh, there's, there's something interesting about the mail this week. Somebody asked me what's interesting stuffed, about the mail. Stuffed full? What's it was stuffed about? full. We got so much mail this week. And that's all because we're giving away a Twisby Micarta. And to enter, you just have to send us a letter or a postcard or something in the mail, real mail. And at the end of the month, we'll draw a winner from all the entries. So far, we've had 53 entries. So that's a lot of mail for us, but still very good odds if you want to get in on this. Because right now, you'd only be competing with 53 other people. So I, we have all the details are at our website under the We're Giving Away a Twisby Micarta post. And there was something else I wanted to mention about it. Oh. Uh, and this this isn't limited to just the U.S., right? No, no, no. Right? no. We've, got, we've got things. I, I didn't open any of it, uh, but I did look where they were coming from. We have 20 of the United States are, are in this, have are represented. Um so we're still looking for the other 30, plus Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico and all that. But the the huge majority are from California. I mean, leaps and really? bounds above all the other states. Everyone in California wants this micarta. I don't know why. We've well, got... I'll tell you what. If you get a postcard from a Brianna McGraystein in uh, Milan, Ohio. Well, I, <laughs> some of them were from Ohio. Uh uh, One was from Cleveland, as I recall, and I don't remember the name of the other city. And I'm thinking, gosh, we were just there. Um, we've gotten four from Canada, two from Australia, and three from Spain. Nice. I don't know why they're coming from Spain. Perhaps Spain's postal service is much faster than all the other European postal services. Uh, because that's all of Europe that's been represented so far, thus far. Not even England yet. Uh, we've got we've got Spain. So send in your cards, your letters, your little postcards if you want to get on all this drawing, which will happen at the end of the month uh, for a Twisby Micarta. And where are we going now, Mr. Smith? 
Well, um, I think it's time to give something away. What should we give away? You mean a geek I challenge? Should we do a geek challenge? Yeah. Let's do a geek challenge. I can come up with some questions. Uh, I want to have something I can give away. I actually pulled this. Let's give away. Do you remember when we did the awesome review on this pen that you're seeing right now? It's the Schaefer VFM fountain pen in maximum orange. Wow. Wow. Where, where are we seeing this at? If I click the right button, you'd see it. it How's that? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, that pin. That actually a a really good pin. I mean, it's like fifteen bucks. Um, Heck of a good pin. Yeah, I think. How generous are you guys? This is amazing. My main problem with that pin was the filling system because if I'm recalling, it won't take a converter, and it's like a proprietary cartridge or something like that. That was my main problem with the pen. But other than that, it certainly is good enough to give away, don't you think? Absolutely. Uh, do we have any audience members? Or I mean, it's been an hour and sixteen minutes. Has everybody left the room yet, or are they just tuning oh, in now no, to we, get into Geek Geek of the Week? We got a good twenty-five. Somebody call me I'm then, guessing. and I'll I'll come up with questions. Nine zero nine six four seven five zero five six nine zero nine six four seven five zero five six. I'm waiting. Operators are standing by. What should we talk about <laughs> while we wait? This Eric, what did you think about this color? This was my favorite. This was my favorite color. Uh, we both got the maximum orange because I mean, where do you find an orange pen? I don't. They're, they're know. not I'm, the. I guess you could drop a couple hundred on a Delta, but or, or maybe an Edison. Someone from Maryland is calling. Shall we say hello? Yes. Brian Anderson says I'd call, but I have twenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Hey, fellas. Hi, uh, who's calling, please? This is. Uh... Uh, Tim Hoffman. Tim, okay, maneuver. how are you, Maneuver? Your your letter. I'll just let you know since you're on the phone. Your letter did arrive. <laughs> it was the only one that I had to open because it, you know. Well, you know why. I'll make that another show. Shall we move on to Geek of the Week? <laughs> <laughs> geek. <laughs> geek of the Week. A Geek of the Week. No, Geek. The Geek Challenge. Geek challenge. I'll come back to the show right now. Okay, I've got three questions. Uh, they're all true or false. Uh, Mr. Gray is here to help you if you need help with these. And Dan and I will help both of you if you can't get these right. True or false? Franklin Kristoff, we were just talking about that company, released oh, their geez. first fountain pen in 2001. Oh, man. You know, honestly, I, I know Scott Franklin really well. Sorry, to bed, I'd probably have heard you talk about that. We talked about it, but we didn't mention this. It's going to have to be... Brian, are you any help here? You know, honestly, I I I really don't know that I'm much it help. Might not I, I'm be true. Brian says it's true. Do you agree with him, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> I said true. <laughs> I was going to guess true. I suppose I have uh, I, I have little choice. Okay, so we're getting a true on this. Yes, it is true. For all of you, all of you who are wondering, Franklin Kristoff okay. released their first fountain pen in 2001. Uh, Tim, I think you have to turn the sound down on your computer. I honestly did not okay. know that. I, I'm a I big Franklin Christoph fan. Right. And, but, and the uh, pen, wait, just, okay. just in, in case anybody wants to know, the pen was called IPO. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> We're going to stick with the Franklin Christoph theme. So here's the next true or false statement. True or false, Franklin Christoph was founded in 1901 as the Franklin Company. Actually, I think I know that. Um, I know Brian, that Frank Brian thinks he knows it. Sounds, cre- it. sounds credible to me. Brian, do you say true I, I'm going to say true. I'm going to say true. Brian I says say true. true. And so does Dan. I say it's true. What do you say, Tim? I'm all for it. All right. It is true. <laughs> Franklin Christoph uh, began life as the Franklin Company in 1901. They weren't making fountain Not pens then. Uh, their first fountain pen was in 2001, but they did. Be, they did. Well, they were what founded in 1901 as the Franklin Company, which leads us directly to our third and most important question for the win. The okay. founder of the Franklin Company, whose name was J. W. Franklin, was the great 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 grandson of Benjamin Franklin's brother. <laughs> Dan's laughing I'm at say this. Fa- I'm going to say false. <laughs> and, and Mr. Gray says false, but he doesn't always know mm. what he's talking about. Tim. Exactly. You know, I thought I knew my uh, Franklin Christoph well, history. So if you want my opinion, it sounds credible I'm to me. I'm the kind of guy to disagree just arbitrarily, but I'm going to, I'm going to go with false on this just because something, something in the back of my mind is, is telling me it's true. 
I changed. Oh, 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 there you go. Change my mind. Going, we're going with true. We're going with true. Somebody told you true in the in the chat, didn't they? Congratulations, Tim. <laughs> you have won the pen. And I already have your address. Yeah. So shall I just send it there? Yeah, that's fine. All right. I'll, I'll be here. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for playing, and I hope we all learn something about the Franklin Pen Company, who are, by the way, not sponsoring this show. They should be. <laughs> Might as well have. <laughs> Talk to you later, Tim. Thanks thank for calling. You, very much. Have a great night, guys. you too. All right, we gave away a pen. All right, that was nice good. Pen. And we learned something. Good set about... of questions. Yeah, well, I was amazed at, uh, at the Benjamin Franklin reference, so I thought, well, I'm going to throw that in just so we can all learn it. Because, you know, nobody ever... The funny thing ever... is, there were there were two comments saying false and one saying absurd. Absurd. So, well, well, I have I think, not... You, you, you had me I fooled. Not I have I, I, I remember talking to Scott that, that the history of the company goes way back before fountain pens, but I didn't... That that really is true about the Benjamin Franklin link, right? Mm. The, the founder of the company's name was J.W. Franklin, and yeah. his great, great, great grandfather was Benjamin's brother. No way. Wow. So, I mean, this is as close as we're ever going to get to Benjamin Franklin. Let's buy some of these pens. Come on. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm finished. Is everybody else finished? I think so. Let me just read yeah. off our contact information, as I generally do. You can contact us via email, podcast at fpgeeks.com. You can call us, 415-685-GEEK, 415-685-4335. We are on Twitter, twitter.com slash fpgeeks. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash fpgeeks. We have a website, fpgeeks.com. We have a really fun forum at fpgeeks.forum. And please send us letters. If you send us a letter this month, you'll automatically be entered into our drawing for a Twisby McCarta at the end of the month. We are at Fountain Pen Geeks, P.O. Box 499, Highland, California, 92346. And before I forget, I want to remind everyone, don't write like Brian Gray. And don't spill ink like Dan Smith. And don't waste paper like Eric. There we go. So we're going to call it a wrap now? Yeah. Actually, now, don't, don't forget, if you do get a postcard from a Brianna McGraysteen in Milan, it's not me, just just. Put it in, and if 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 the if the Mikarta goes to that person, then uh, Brian, you know. you're you're not excluded from this. If you want to send, it's a <laughs> random drawing. Every Dan and I are excluding ourselves. We've already got Mikartas, but uh, other than that, everyone is. You know, Tyler Dahl wrote and said, "Can I enter?" Of course you can, Tyler. I'm not going to like make you win just because you've been a geek of the week. <laughs> Buy your own pen. <laughs> I'll stick. I'll still make it, Brianna. Just just to okay, be funny. Okay, you make it, Brianna, and we'll do that. All right. All right. I'm gonna. Say good night, and we'll see Thanks. you all next week. Thanks a lot, fellas. Have a good night. You've been listening to Eric and Dan on Fountain Pen Radio, a weekly podcast produced by FBGeeks.com. Thanks for listening. But the fun is far from over as the site is constantly buzzing with new content. So until next week, thanks for coming out. Good night.